What's going on guys, Slavey here. Welcome back to another Albion Online video. Today we will be ahead of the nerfs and go over the best build for solo dungeons. You might have seen, or you might have heard, that the Great Axe is becoming viable for PvP. But this is at the cost of its PvE potential. This is the very same Great Axe that's known for the longest time as the best weapon for solo dungeons. So you might be wondering which weapon will take its place, and in this video I'll show you exactly that. Aside from the build, I'll provide you a lot of extra information so you can play this new build however you like. You get to see my favorite build, which I think is great, a budget version which makes it accessible even to newer players, and you will also get insight on possible item swaps to personalize this build to your liking. I'll also be sharing one of my favorite methods on how to go about doing solo dungeons, which you can do even as a newer player. The build is as follows, and as it is right now, the build costs about 200k silver. That includes a full loadout, except for the mount, since that one is fully up to you and doesn't have an impact on the actual clearing. I've equipped a tier 4 set, since I do have specs in the various pieces, and would like to have my item power at a relatable level, so that even if you are a beginner, you can see exactly what this build is capable of. So since I am in flat 4, you would have to play in a 4.2 set to have similar stats, which is what I recommend you play in if all you can equip is tier 4. Simply buy the exact same set and the necessary materials and enchant it. These materials will cost you an additional 60k silver and add 200 item power to this build, which is an increase of about 20% to your equipment stats. If you are an advanced player, however, you can take whatever tier you want, since you most likely already know what you are doing. I will be doing tier 6 solo dungeon maps in Carleon as I explain everything about this build. And the reason I do these maps specifically is because they are very cheap and spawn very close to the city. These maps are only 6k each currently, and whenever you pop them in Carleon, it spawns in one of the zones connected to the city. Tier 6 red zones also provide a good bonus to rewards and are relatively high level dungeons that can drop the highest tier of items. Anyone can do this without having to spend time on traveling, joining a guild whatsoever. You also have the benefit of seeing how many gankers are in the area, therefore it's also less risky than the black zone. Now the prices in Carleon in general are more expensive than in other cities, but this also means the loot you farm will sell for higher prices and you will have access to the black market. And the final advantage is that you can faction flag for Carleon and grind some extra money by increasing the risk of your gameplay. So pop a map and simply head there. Once you enter the dungeon, wait for 90 seconds at the entrance. This will close the dungeon behind you meaning that no one can dive you and you can farm in a complete safe way. So what makes this build so great and how does it work? The weapon we use in this build is the light crossbow, which is a one-handed ranged weapon. On the Q you want to take explosive bolt, which has very low cooldown and is an AoE. This ability does a good chunk of damage to all enemies hit. This will be your primary damage ability. On the W you want to take Caltrops, which is another ability with low cooldown and also an AoE. This one deals little damage and is less reliable, but as a bonus it does slow any enemy's hit. On your E you have the Exploding Shot, which has a very low cooldown for a special ability and once again is an AoE. The target you use it on takes some initial damage and after a couple seconds the second wave of AoE damage takes place that deals damage to everyone around your target. So you're looking at three abilities that are all AoE and have very low cooldowns. This is the most ideal setup for solo dungeons as it's mainly about clearing mob packs throughout the dungeon. Now this setup becomes even better because of the passive on the weapon, which is the well prepared passive. After every four spell cast, this passive resets the cooldown of the Q ability and since the Q is our primary damage dealer, 
It means this passive is a great boost to our overall DPS. Since all three weapon abilities have very low cooldown, this also means the passive will be activated very often. You will notice that between the three abilities there is a mix of both physical and magical damage. And that makes the Crypt Candle an excellent offhand choice for the Light Crossbow, since it provides a bonus to both physical and magical ability. The crossbows are weapons that rely on abilities, and you try to minimize the auto attacks you do with it, because they are very slow. Nonetheless, you might find yourself doing auto attacks anyway, because all your abilities are on cooldown, and for that reason we take the Tedford Cape. The Tedford Cape provides yet another AoE damage ability, this time on your auto attacks with a low cooldown that really complements this build and makes clearing so much faster. So even the moments you will rely on the weakest points of this build, you will still be doing a lot of damage. Your most important armor piece is the chest piece, which will be the cultist rope. It's mainly about the fact it's cloth and provides the highest offensive stats among all the armors. The special ability of the cultist rope also provides both health and energy sustain, which can come in handy if you need these. We don't have any other energy sustain abilities in this build and most of the time you won't have any energy issues whilst playing this build. But every now and then you might find yourself up against a legendary boss where you might run out of energy during the fight. So having it on the armor is a very big plus. Even the health sustain can be a very good advantage during the more difficult fights. For the shoes you can go with any of the ladders. The ability we will be using is a refreshing sprint, which all the leather shoes have access to. This will give a quick boost to our cooldowns and makes for mobility, which means we can use our abilities more often and do more damage. As for the helmet, you want to go with the assassin hood, which provides a short channel ability that reduces all your cooldowns drastically. With this, you can reset your entire rotation and repeat it in quick succession. This ability really helps with bosses, as you can dish out a lot of damage in a very short window. For food you want the cabbage soup, which will make for health regen between the packs, and a stack of poison pots which you want to use against bosses. So this build as covered so far is what I think a very great build for solo dungeons. But I understand if you want to play it differently, because you wish to level certain items, or want cheaper alternatives. Let's first take a look at how we can make this build cheaper. What makes this build expensive at tier 4 is the cape and offhand, which together accounts for 75% of the loadout's cost. The cape alone is 50% of the cost, so if you wish to go budget, the first change I would recommend is to change the Tedford cape to a regular cape. This will take away your AoE damage on your auto attack every time this ability is up. But that really is an extra thing if you ask me, and you might as well wait an extra second or two for another queue in those few cases. Not taking the tethered cape will not be a game changer and will still make this build a very strong one. As for the Crypt Candle offhand, there are cheaper options that are viable as well, such as the Musak or Facebreaker that have less bonus damage, or the Mist Color which makes for lower cooldowns. But I really recommend you stick to the Crypt Candle as your one expensive item, since it adds a lot of value to your abilities and build. If the price of the Cultist Rope is ever to go up, as we have seen in the past, the Mage Rope is a great budget alternative, since it provides the same offensive bonuses. You will lose out on the Energy Sustain, which is useful to have during Legendary bosses, so if you ever find yourself in a situation where you need Energy Sustain, you can simply change your weapon's passive to energetic, or your helmet's ability to energy regain. And as a last thing, I will provide some item alternatives that I haven't mentioned in the make it budget section. So if you skip that part and want more item alternatives, you might want to navigate back. We obviously can't change the weapon, and as mentioned already, the Crypt Candle is a great offhand that adds a lot of value to this build. So those two I would definitely keep untouched. Now the changes I'm about to mention will take away from the build's effectiveness, but you might want to level different things for other content 
whilst playing the light crossbow. So I'll help you understand what's viable and what's not and why. For both the helmet and shield slot, you can take anything you wish to level. In general, these are the least impactful parts of a solo dungeon build. A couple noticeable mentions are the Cow of Purity, which is a pretty expensive one, but makes for additional AoE damage. The Mage Cow, which provides single target damage, and the Stalker Hood, which has a damage buff, a resistance debuff, and very low cooldown to its ability. As for the shoes, you could take the Royal Sandals to increase your damage. If you ever decide to swap out the Cultist Rope, you could also take any of the Cloth Sandals for the Energetic Sprint to regain your energy source. You might notice these are all items with offensive abilities, but if you want to level something defensive, such as the Guardian Helmet, that's completely fine as well. So once again, for the helmets and shoes, you can choose anything you want at the cost of effectiveness. Now the armor piece on the other hand is far more important, as there is a big difference in the damage bonuses between the various armor types. Plate armors are simply not viable with this weapon or clearing solo dungeons in general. It is possible to use them, as you can equip any item you want in the game, but the abilities of plate armors do nothing for solo dungeoning, and the offensive bonuses are either non-existent or very poor. Leather jackets, on the other hand, work well with bruiser weapons in solo dungeons, but still fall short for ranged weapons. If you want to take any of the leather jackets, however, I won't stop you, but I do not recommend it. And although the various cloth ropes have different abilities and the difference in the bonuses they provide, the bonuses are plenty to justify the use of any of them. So if you want to level any of the cloth pieces, feel free to take whichever you want. Aside from the mage rope, which was mentioned in the budget section already, the cleric rope is a noticeable one that has less bonus stats, but provides an immunity shield with a damage buff to it. An ability that could help you out in tough situations. If you want to sacrifice some of your passive bonuses for active bonuses, you can also take the druid rope, which has a damage buff ability. But if you do take the druid rope, you also want to take the specter hood. And the biggest adjustment to the build I provided, which actually increases the effectiveness, is swapping out the cabbage soup for an Avalonian beef stew. This food still provides you health regen, whilst also giving you a damage buff. But the Avalonian beef stew is very expensive, and I would only recommend you to use it if you do dungeons in higher tier black zones, so that it actually pays for itself. I will link some useful videos below that are relevant to the things we've talked about in this video. Go check those out whenever it fits you and become better in dungeoning and a better player overall. Have fun with this build and I'll see you next time.